Good afternoon. It is Thursday, November 6, 2025. We have a lot to discuss about in today's update because there is very good agreement that we are going to see some record shattering Arctic temperatures across much of the Midwest, the upper Midwest, including for the Great Lakes and the Deep South, where some locations could see temperatures into the single digits in the early part of November, which is extremely rare to see, with wind chill values that could even dip down just below zero degrees. So you definitely want to stay around for this video as we discuss about this Arctic outbreak and the risk for lake effect snow as well. So with that being said, here's a look at the current weather conditions across much of the lower 48 states here. And we can see there's a big atmospheric river that is slamming across much of Northern California yet again. This has been a thing for the last few days already where we have had a lot of rainfall, strong winds, colder temperatures. That continues to impact also Oregon and Washington. But this is going to soon change our weather pattern as a big Arctic polar vortex really sets up shop over Hudson Bay. And this is going to get released into the Midwest by the early part of next week, triggering some of the coldest temperatures that you have witnessed in November in a very long time. But in the meantime, enjoy the warm weather while it lasts because it's not going to last for too much longer after you see these temperatures and right now current temperatures across much of the deep south and texas into the 70s and 80s we even got some mid to upper 80s here in central texas right now so yeah it's feeling still like summertime but again that's not going to last a whole lot longer indiana temperatures in the upper 50s to lower 60s of this hour including for the northeast seeing temperatures there in the 40s and 30s with temperatures in the 40s and 50s across the northern tier, but you could already see where that cold Arctic air is already across Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Quebec, Ontario, Canada, and yeah, that's where it's really cold right now with current temperatures right now are right around 10 to 15 degrees above zero. All of this colder air is going to come down out of the north in the next few days. And when we look at those 24-hour temperature changes in the last day or so, we could see where it's warmer than it was 24 hours ago. That's all the orange and yellow on your screen there over the high plains over Montana as well as the Dakotas, where it's cold Cooler than this time yesterday. That's the areas in blue and purple where temperatures are cooler than they were 24 hours ago. So you can see where all the cooler air here is. Temperatures are cooler up there in Canada than they were 24 hours ago. And all of this is going further south in the next few days. So yeah, get used to seeing all, a lot more blue colors here indicating that temperatures are cooler progressively over the last 24 hours. But it's not just the bittery cold temperatures that you're gonna feel out of Canada over the next few days here by early next week. It is going to be what it's going to trigger. When you get cold air that moves over much of the Great Lakes, especially this time of the year, since the Great Lake waters are still very warm compared to the actual air temperature that moves over them, we are going to see a lot and a lot of lake effect snow. And some of this could be pretty substantial for November standards. So I hope you're ready to not only just see some colder air, but also expect a lot of lake effect snow, depending on where you actually live here on on this weather map. So with that, let's take a look here at the European model. And this came out just a couple of hours ago and we can see what we're dealing with right now. There's some snow here across Quebec and Ontario, Canada. To the south, you got this cold frontal future that is draping across Michigan into the upper Midwest of Indiana and Ohio. But that's nothing compared to with what you're gonna be dealing with as we go into early next week. And so this is where the changes really shape up. By the time we go into your Saturday afternoon, early evening hours, you can see here comes a little bit of snow, not a whole lot going on, right? Because that colder air hasn't really arrived. It's all up here to the north where we have some snow there coming off of Hudson Bay. But this is going to progress further south, especially as we go into Sunday. Sunday is going to be the transition day for many locations where you're expecting to see a little bit of snow, some flurries in the wake of that cold front as it sweeps across the area. But to the north here where we get Barrow Clinic um, Ascent, that's where we get, or Barrow Tropic, we should say, that's where you're going to get a little more snowfall out of this. But it should miss most of the United States. However, if you are in uh 
Oswego. If you are in, say, uh, Buffalo, New York, you might get a rain-snow mix out of this, but the biggest impact is going to be this very cold air as it sinks southward, and wait until you see the temperature anomalies and the actual air temperatures and the wind chill values. They're going to be butterily our uh, biting, biting cold. That's what I, the word that I was looking for. But also look at the um, lake effect snow that you're going to see with this, especially if you're in Michigan, if you're downstream into, say, northern Indiana. Look at this. This is a very intense snow band that is coming off of Lake Michigan. And there might even be some thunder snow with that, too. Yeah, I mean, Winter is coming in like a lion. It literally is. One day it's 70 degrees and the next day it's literally too cold to even be outside. And so that's what it's going to feel like. And this is going to continue for a while. Look at all the snow that is going to be dumping across much of Indiana, the Ohio Valley, uh, it, more in the way of flurries, but some of these bands could be a little heavier. But then look at down here in, say, Tennessee, as well as the Georgia area. Yeah, look at the thicknesses here, indicating lots of cold air aloft moving over the warm landmass. That's going to lead to some instability and a little bit of snow here. And of course, maybe Maybe some snow here in portions of Virginia. So what an interesting weather pattern really setting up as we go into the early to the middle of next week. Definitely going to be a very different story for a lot of you that like the warm weather. Some of you don't like the warm weather this time of the year. So it, it's a win-win, right? It's a win or lose situation depending on your take on the temperatures and the precipitation. So now, why is it going to get so cold, you might be asking. Well, looking at the 500 millibar height map here, um, let's see, there we go. This is the latest model run. So you can see this trough is going to dig down, and as it does so, lots of colder air is going to be coming down with it. And take note of these uh, wind barbs here uh, coming in out of the north. This is all northerly flow. That's going to bring in a lot of cold air invection on the backside of the trough and to help bring down a lot of colder air because the trough is right here. And so you can kind of get an idea how dynamic this system actually is. Not a lot of moisture to work with, but I'll tell you what, what a trough to say the least here for the first full week of November or to end the first full week, that is, because that one is definitely going to bring in some notable temperature downtrends over the area over the course of the next few days, especially beginning on Saturday night into Sunday. And then a uh, nice good ridge tries to build in across the Midwest, but not too long after that, another trough tries to slide down and bring in some modified Arctic air with it. But that's going to be the, for the extreme northeast, if that. So now let's talk about the snow because, yes, the temperatures, will get to that, but it's also about the lake effect snow that we just talked about here. And so we're going to be using the NWS blend of models or the or basically the NBM with what the National Weather Service always uses to give us a best guess forecast on how much snow you could see out of this. Remember, this is not a frontal base like system where everybody's going to get like seven to 15 inches of snow or it's not one of those blockbuster snowstorms. This is going to be very localized. But yeah, if you're caught under the dust, in other words, it's an analogy is if you're caught downwind of any of these lake effect snow bands, you're going to get a decent amount, anywhere between three to six inches, maybe a little more than that. And we can see here for Michigan, many areas here, um, downwind, especially for southwestern Michigan, you might get up to about six inches of snowfall. Some other areas here up to maybe eight or nine inches of snow. This changes with each progressive model run, but this is pretty much locked in at this point out to about five or six days. And some other areas here could get a little bit of a dusting of snow. It's a really hit and miss situation. It's going to really favor the Great Lakes, like northern Michigan. Michigan here. Um, boy, lots of snow there. Uh, we also have a lot of snow over uh, portions of, say, Cincinnati, Ohio. You might get maybe about five or six inches of snow. Then northeastern Ohio, you might get up to 10 inches of snow. Now for the northeast, like Buffalo, Os uh, Oswego, Oswa something like that. Oh, wait. Oswego. That's what I was looking for, right? I said it right. I said it. I corrected myself. Oswego. 
that's a tough one to uh, pronounce sometimes if you're not used to pronouncing names like me. Um, uh, uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, you might get maybe up to a foot of snow with this. Some isolated locations like Watertown, you might get your first foot of snow out of this, believe it or not, thanks to that cooler air that's going to be coming off of the lakes. Colder air over warm lake waters, that promotes instability. Air is unstable. You get rising motion, and that forms clouds, and clouds turn into snow in this case because the temperature is below freezing, and that's how you get all this snow that develops. Also, not to mention, across parts of Quebec and Ontario, Canada, you could get up to about a foot of snow. That's pretty normal for this time of the year because, well, you're further north. So now we talked about the snow. Let's talk about the colder uh, bittering Arctic temperatures that are going to be coming with this. So let's kind of rewind here and go to this weekend. And so we can see where all the colder air it here is. And this is 850 millibar temperatures, by the way, anomalies. And the reason why I'm using this is it gives us a better outline on where the Arctic air mass is going to be moving over versus our temperatures that get skewed up a little bit, especially with physical or, or physics physics-based models like this. So you can see where the cooler air is here, temperatures below average, and this colder air nose dives southward. And so you can see right about in here, by the time we go into Sunday, that's some really cold air. Yeah, I mean, you got some pink colors here over, uh, say, Nebraska, uh, uh, Alabama. I will send Nebraska there. Alabama, Mississippi, as well as Georgia, the Tennessee Valley. Let's just put this into context. This would equate to temperatures about 25 to 30 degrees below average at the surface. Okay, that is really, really far below average for this time of the year. I'm, I'm not joking when I say that. And if you don't believe me, let's take a look at the actual surface uh, temperature anomaly here really quickly. And that really matches up really well, um, especially um, in during the day. Look at this, a uh, 30 degree temperature below average for this time of the year in Tennessee. Look at some of the higher elevations here, even as much as 40 degrees below average. My goodness, that's cold. Um, definitely for this time of the year. And then if you're in Indiana, temperatures 20 to 30 degrees below average, perhaps. Definitely, definitely going to feel way more like winter time. Not even fall at this point. It's going to just feel straight to winter like instead. While much of the Intermountain West here, like California, gets to get smothered in temperatures that are going to be above average. But that's not going to last for too much longer for us. We're going to go straight below average. By the time we go into the middle to the end of next week, just in time for my birthday, which is on the 15th of November, we're going to be dealing with an arc storm, uh, an atmospheric river, and some strong winds. Yes, for once it rains on my birthday. It never does, usually. So when it comes to those actual air temperature uh, forecast here in the next four days, you can see this colder air really comes out of the north. You can see temperatures here into the low 20s and even getting temperatures perhaps into the upper teens in some of the coldest wind sheltered areas like some of the valley locations get temperatures in the upper teens at night. That's pretty cold. Temperatures in the low to mid 20s in Indiana. And then eventually that cooler air is going to try to grasp further south into perhaps even in the southernmost states here of Louisiana. I mean, come on, Louisiana. Are you kidding me? You're at 35 degrees, 35 degrees on Thursday next week. And then Georgia by Thursday morning, you have temperatures actually, yeah, Thursday morning, it's going to be pretty cold. Look at some of these locations, 14 degrees for your overnight low. We've got 20 degrees in Indianapolis. If you are in Kokomo, Indiana, man, it is going to be pretty darn cold out there for your Thursday morning, all thanks to that colder air. And then that moves out of the way very quickly. And that is to be replenished by overnight lows back into the upper 40s to lower 40s in many spots with daytime highs perhaps back into the low 60s. Yeah, so it's not going to last for too long, but when it comes, you're going to feel it. So the wind chill values really quickly, I wanted to kind of discuss about this because, yeah, the, the air is going to feel colder because there's going to be some strong winds with this coming in out of the north. And so you can see these wind chill values as low as 10 degrees in some areas. Yeah, I've got even some uh, single digits for those wind chill values there in, in the upper Great Lakes. And then this colder air really filters in. I mean, this, this is how cold it's going to feel. 
I mean, it's going to feel like 35 degrees in Central Florida by Thursday morning. I mean, look at this. Even Miami, Florida, down to 55 degrees. That's what it feels like outside than the actual air temperature. And then look at some of the higher elevations, some of the Appalachians here. Holy moly, that's cold. It's going to feel like negative 1 to negative 5 degrees. In some areas here, like 15 degrees above zero, it's going to feel like, I mean, central Ohio might feel like 4 degrees for your Thursday morning. So I'm telling you guys, bundle up buttercups because it's going to be downright chilly for most of next week at least. That's what the, uh, the European model is indicating to us right now, that this colder air is going to really nosedive out of northern and central Canada. But anyways, if you did find today's weather forecast very helpful, detailed, informative, and life-saving, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, folks. It really, really helps out a lot. I'm here all fall, all winter long, even including the spring for severe weather to track the weather across the United States. So again, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, this is the time to doing so to help show your support with the work that I do, please hit the like button, share this video with their family and friends on social media, and leave a comment in the section below this video. And if you do subscribe to the channel, uh, please make sure you hit the bell icon so you don't miss an update here on the channel. As always, have a great rest of your Thursday on the 6th day of November 2025. I'll be back with you more in a couple of days with another forecast.